Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Canyons Lakeside Resort and Marina, located on the shores of beautiful Sage Lake. Get away to their newly remodeled beautiful bed and breakfast or their historic 13-room hotel. Special events and activities for all ages. Call now or go online for more information on this Michigan treasure. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Hingeman Acres, Canoe Livery and Resort on M33 just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Michigan Magazine. I'm Barry Stutzman. This week on the show, we take you to a couple of unusual Michigan places. First into the UP to a Lake Superior shoreline community called Grand Moray. Here is where we find the Pickle Barrel House, a home based on the 20th century cartoon character's Teeny Weenies. The home owned by the author, William Donahue, is now a museum. We tour this amazing piece of literary history. Then we head down to rural Sutton's Bay in northwestern Lower Michigan to tour the amazing Black Star Farms. It's a beautiful, luxurious B&B, a distillery, a cheese manufacturing operation, and an equestrian center, all tucked away in the rolling hills of Leelanau County. Stay tuned, it's all coming up on Michigan Magazine. Announcing the Michigan Paddle Sports Directory, or one-stop internet connection at michiganpaddlesports.com. It's now possible to explore Michigan's extensive waterways like never before. Michigan Paddle Sports Directory is a comprehensive directory of canoe and kayak rentals and liveries throughout the entire state of Michigan. At michiganpaddlesports.com, you'll find a great paddling route, outfitter, store, school, rental shop, or tour guide. Michigan's great waterways are waiting for you. Make it an adventure worth remembering by first visiting michiganpaddlesports.com. Today, Michigan Magazine is on the highways and byways as usual. Today, we are in the beautiful community of Grand Marais, Michigan, in the beautiful Upper Peninsula, way up here. And the water and the waves are just rolling in slowly. And I am with Delphine Wilson. Delphine Wilson, so nice to meet you. You are the person who contacted me about coming up here to beautiful Grand Marais and learning more about what you folks are doing up here. And right behind us, we'll be talking with a lady here, uh, who is it, Pat? Uh, Pat Munger. Pat Munger, we'll be talking with her in a little bit about the pickle barrel. But before we get into talking with Pat, let's find out more about what uh, Grand Marais or what you folks are trying to do here. We do have a lot of activities going on in Grand Marais. Um, we have a lot of things for people to see. We do, like you said, have the pickle barrel. We do have the agate museum. We have the um, Lighthouse Keepers Museum that's being renovated. Um, there is, Grand Marais is such a beautiful place for people to come and just relax. What is in the back of us here is the Pickle Barrel. Now, there is some history to the Pickle Barrel. Much history. I could go on forever about the Pickle Barrel. We're going to go inside here in a little bit, but just give us a, a, a little bit of background to the Pickle Barrel. Is it, was it really a Pickle Barrel? No, it was never used as a Pickle Barrel. That's why the history is quite long. Um, it uh, was actually made for Mr. Donahue, and I don't know if you ever saw the Teeny Weeny cartoons, but the Teeny Weeny cartoons were syndicated uh, throughout the United States. He wrote for the Chicago Tribune, and uh -huh. he had these cartoons, and he also advertised for Monarch Foods, which made pickles. Okay. And in his pickles, he had these little characters that were two inches tall, and they went out in the woods and had found things to live in, uh, shoes and tin cans. <laughs> One of the things they found to live in was a little pickle barrel. They packaged their pickles in little pickle barrels okay. at the time. It was, and this was 1926, and the president of the Monarch Food Company decided to build Mr. Donahue a 
pickle barrel to live in. And he built it out on Sabo Lake, which is about two miles outside of town. Okay. And uh, it was given to Mr. and Mrs. Donahue as a gift. And they did live in it for about 10 years. This particular building this right building, here? This building. This is the this original barrel. pickle barrel. This pickle barrel. This is the and original. And so it was moved back into town. Yes, they had many, many guests, which is kind of hard for me to believe because in 1926, it was a dirt road to town, not a really yeah. good road at all. Yeah. So it's hard to believe it, but they had a lot of guests coming out to visit, uh -huh. and they were very gracious to all of them, and they got tired of it. <laughs> so they so said, moved it. we're going to move it to town. Okay. So, uh, so how long has it been here in town then? Since 1936. 1936. Well, that's a bit before my time, even. By yes, my time too. All right. Uh, so it's been here, and it's been used as what? As a museum of sorts? Uh, it is a museum now, but it wasn't used to set before. It was used as an information center. It was used to sell ice cream, and then it was just left, and it was in very, very bad shape uh, three years ago. And our historical society decided we wanted to renovate it. First thing we had to do was own it. Uh -huh. And so with the help of one very generous donor and the previous owners, we were able to buy it. Okay. So we own the pickle barrel and the land that we're here okay. on. That's owned by the Historical the Society? The Historical Society owns that. Okay. And then we um, really got a fundraiser going and we've renovated it. Uh, we did that two summers ago. Mm -hmm. Last summer we opened it on July 4th. Mm -hmm. we, two years after we started our fundraising. So what do you do for proud. fundraisers? How do you raise money for such a... Uh, we had a lot of grant. We had some grants too. Grants, I have yeah. to say, grants. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we've done many things. Just uh, one thing: we just wrote letters to all yeah. the people yeah. in, that own property in town. Um, we have a big uh, auction sale. Oh, yeah. it's more like a yard sale every yeah. year. We put a tent up out there, and all the people in town in the morning bring all the the items that you yeah. would have in a garage sale down to us, and we arrange them all in okay. there. And then we have the sale in the afternoon, and they all come back to buy stuff. And so what do you <laughs> do with the funds then? You help preserve the, yes, the history the, here. Now, yeah, but, naturally, there's more than just one historical marker here, like yes. the Pickle Barrel. What else would we see here? Then uh, we have a historical museum that the Historical Society also is. Okay. We run, uh, it's actually owned by the National Park Services. Um, it is the Lighthouse Keeper's Home. Now, when we go inside of the Pickle Barrel, what are we going to see? Well, we have it set as a museum to the Donahues. And so it is set up as their home, as it was when they lived in it in 1926. Okay. Uh, the, living, the first room we go into is the room that we have a showcase with some of the items that were actually theirs. We have some items for sale in there. Um, then we have, after you leave that room, then we have the kitchen and the pantry, which are as Donna he's had it. Uh -huh. And then we have the, uh, the upstairs is their bedroom. Okay. Were they uh, prominent people in the area? Or oh, what? yes, very much so, because he was a writer of children's books, and he also was uh, this cartoonist with these teeny weeny characters. Uh -huh. um, the teeny weenies were very popular, and I'm amazed now at, at the following that they still have. We try to buy things over the Internet, the things will come up for sale that are the teeny weeny things, and they are very expensive, into the hundreds of dollars. What, uh, where were they published at? What, what papers? Uh, what, the uh, Chicago Tribune originally started uh -huh. it, and then uh, it was syndicated throughout the United States after that. Okay. I believe the Detroit News Did they ever them. make cartoon, movie cartoons on them? Or no, they never did. Um, we've heard we, there are still some descendants living here in town, uh -huh. and we've heard that there's a possibility that, that they want to make an animated cartoon about uh -huh. them. Okay. Hey, who's your friend? This is uh, Sue. She's also a member Sue, of the Historical here. Society. Hi. And the Pickle Barrel Committee. And <laughs> and what else? And the president of the marketplace. Okay. And she has her own business. Okay, so, so we're Pat, all right, you guys. In Grand all right. Well, let's just walk, take a walk in and take a look. See what sure. we've got. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pat, here we are inside the Pickle Barrel. Yes. And uh, you say the family, uh, a family of how many lived in here? It was just two. It was just Mr. Two. and Mrs. Donahue. Okay. They uh, never had children. One thing we have for the children is um, we've made these little teeny weeny characters. We have them hidden throughout here, and I'm not seeing any of them. They're hidden really well. Oh. Um, there's one of them right up here. He's hidden real well. See him right there? And the children come and we give them a placemat that has pictures of all these teeny weeny characters, and they see how many they can find when they go through the museum and they mark them on their thing. Here's another one right up there. Okay. And they really, the children just really enjoy this when they come. Uh, it keeps them occupied. See, the rest of this is kind of is 
more the way it was when the Donahues lived here. This is the okay. pantry. This is the pantry. And these here. are not original things that the Donahues okay. owned, but they are all from that period okay. of the 1920s. And the room we just come out of was what? The living room, more or less? Yeah, that was the living room. This is the pantry. Okay, and this, this here was the kitchen. This is the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Compact. Yeah. The, old, the old ice box. I think that they lived, li Nelson? actually lived here. The old ice box. Yep. Look at that. An old monarch or. Yeah. Those Same, are the drill beans, cans. Stringless beans. Stringless beans. Monarch. This is an antique for sure. Oh yes, everything here is. And the old cast iron stove. Now then, where are we going to next year? We can go upstairs. You now be real careful that you don't bump your head right here. All right. This is a bust of William Donahue. Uh, it was made by his brother, and he, William Dunn, he was about 10 years old when that was made. Oh, really? And it's the, it's the actual thing. And that's a Mrs. Donahue over here. And some of the things we have, this is the chair, and it's the actual chair that Mr. Donahue sat in to write his cartoons. This moves like this. Thanks for showing us around the it's pickle barrel. It's wonderful. I'm really like glad a, you came. I feel like a pickle now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks again, Pat. You're very welcome. Right. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by... Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. Remembering good times and great food, Frank and Lisa invite you to Tim Lizzie's in Bio for a blast back to the 50s and 60s when food was made from scratch, including home ground Angus burgers. A full menu of great food and good memories await you at the new Tim Lizzie's of Mayo. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Rose City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery. Hale Hardware, your do-it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. It's luxury in the midst of a rural setting, a hideaway with the amenities of a world-class retreat. We're referring to a wonderful B&B Inn in Sutton's Bay called Black Star Farms, an inn we were introduced to by Kathy Tetson and Beverly Rydell, authors of the popular Michigan Vacation Guide to Cottages, Chalets, Condos, B&Bs. In the description of Black Star, Kathy and Beverly say it all when they write, Black Star Farm is a 160-acre year-round destination on the Leelanau Wine Trail, combining B&B Inn, winery, distillery, creamery, and equestrian center. Eight luxurious guest rooms with private baths, sauna, sumptuous gourmet breakfasts, evening hospitality hour, hiking and ski trails, on-site tasting room, boarding for guest horses, and it's smoke-free. What a delight it was to be given a personal tour by innkeeper Donald Cole. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Dan. How you doing? Hello, Don. Hello. Pleasure meeting you here at Black Star Farms. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Well, what an incredible place you have here. Can you tell us a little bit about Black Star Farms, how long it's been in existence here in the area? Well, we bought this property in 1998. Mm -hmm. It was a horse farm, as you noticed when you drove in and when you saw the horses out in their paddocks. Uh, we decided that this, the, really the feature of this product that we really liked was the big hillside coming in Beautiful. and we knew that would be a wonderful place to grow grapes. And then after we started growing grapes we wanted to build our winery and we've since then added to our winery with a distillery producing very unique Michigan fruit brandies. Mm -hmm. And in addition we have uh, a creamery making cheese. Oh boy. 
And we now do quite a lot of farming on the property and we grow a lot of the fruits that we distill as well as the grapes for our, for our wines. Mm -hmm. And it's turned out to be a wonderful pro a property and a great, uh, a great destination to visit. So the wine came first and then uh, the dairy area and then the lodging, right? Is that how it worked? Well, the, the house was side? here and, but never occupied. Never occupied. It was built as a individual residence. As you can see, it's quite large mm -hmm. for an individual residence. Although my wife and I did live here for a little while, but it's turned into an absolutely ideal eight-room bed and breakfast inn. Uh, that's been important to us because not only can we attract people to the farm to show them the products we make and then, then we have a place to stay, but it's also a location that we can bring trade customers and chefs and wine and food writers into the winery to stay with us as we tell them the story of our farm. Mm, an incredible story it is. Have you always had the love of uh, wine and uh, horses and the country? Well, it's not hard to have love for the country yeah. and, for the, uh, and for wine and uh, horses were relatively new to us, but, but that was part of the heritage of Blackstar Farms. It was a uh, dressage training facility and we are a boarding facility and training facility for dressage horses. Pro uh, the, uh, without doubt the primary dressage training facility in northern Michigan. And so we've left uh, the horses on the property because they represent the original use of, of this farm property. Uh, what we're out to develop here, though, is uh, a demonstration farm to show that agriculture can survive up mm -hmm. in areas like Leelanau County, but it will be a different form of agriculture. The agriculture uh, uh, programs that we have here are all based upon taking the products that we grow on the farm and then adding value to them by making something out of the products themselves and then attracting uh, mm -hmm. guests and tourists and other people to come to the farm both to see how products are made but also then to purchase the products that way we get to participate in the entire stream marketing stream mm -hmm. of the produ products we produce and the farm becomes a more profitable entity than just commodity farming right and the guests take back with them more than they came with in education and maybe rest and relaxation and a whole experience which is kind of far and that, that's vital. nowadays. That's vital because we're so separated from farm experience that many families grew up with uh, that we found it was necessary to show how things are made on a working farm. It's very interesting when we get young people in. That's the ones we really like talking yeah. to. Not that I'm trying to attract right. them to the wine right. industry, but uh, they don't know how cheese is made. Right. To yes, them, we... cheese comes in single slices right, and from craft, yes, <laughs> yeah. and uh, to see cheese being made daily and to see how the horses are trained, to see how uh, the fruits and, uh, and, uh, and other items that we produce on this farm are actually, uh, actually processed into, into real food products, I think for a lot of people is a real eye-opener. Mm -hmm. And of course, if somebody just wanted to come here to get away from everybody, they could stay in their room, right? <laughs> the rooms are the place for complete relaxation. Yes. We have, I have a rule here for about staying in our inn. I came out of the hotel business years ago, and my rule about staying at this inn is that if your blood pressure does not go down 20 points, mine goes up 20 points. Mm, so the we, we want you to come and just have a good time and walk the trails and, and, and watch people working on things and see handcrafted products, and it, that's part of the experience. I love the staircase. Now, this has got a lot of history to it, it's I bet. A, it's a very dramatic staircase. It's wonderful for weddings, having the bride oh. come down this staircase and well, there's greeting, an idea. Greeting the family. And you do have weddings here, too. Yes, we do. Oh, and goodness. Uh, we've got a number of, it, as it was built as a private residence, we have a number of rooms of varying sizes. This room has a small uh, bedroom off it so we can accommodate mm -hmm. a family uh, and or two couples traveling together. That's wonderful. And all the rooms have private baths. As you can see, the, uh, the standard of uh, construction in the home is, is quite nice. Mm -hmm. And the furnishings are uh, very modern, uh, very clean. It's a just a nice, relaxing place to spend a long weekend. And I love the acoustics here. It's just so quiet and peaceful. It is quiet. And, and you look out there in the window, that. you can see the horses and you, if you want to, and the winery. And you, may, you may hear the coyotes in the evening, oh. <laughs> but, but that's, uh, that's an interesting experience. One of the advantages of staying in this area is the villages and all the water sports and the golf courses and recreation, the National Lakeshore, 
Interlochen mm. has a music camp. Oh, yes. You know, there's, it's a complete uh, family as well as a breakaway vacation for people who right. just want to get up and experience the up north experience. Yeah, yeah well, it, Sutton's Bay not too far away. It's almost like a Norman Rockwell painting is you know, some of the places. <laughs> no, right. Sutton's Bay is a cute little town. Yeah. And for those of us who live here year round, uh, uh, we, we really uh, treasure our quiet times in the winter and in summer it's just booming and the shops are all open and the restaurants are mm. all open and there's lots of people on the street. It's a fun time here. We certainly can believe that. We had a great time just getting a tour of the property. A tour will continue on a future edition of Michigan Magazine as we explore the creamery, distillery, gift shop, and take you underground into the cheese and wine cellars carved into the hillside of northwestern lower Michigan. Join us then as we experience more of Sutton's Bay's Black Star Farms. Hey, that's it for this edition of Michigan Magazine. All righty now, here's today's word of the day. It's youper. If you're unsure of its meaning, you've never been to Michigan's beautiful Upper Peninsula. Just Google it and see what you find out. Send the word of the day to us in an email with your name, address, and phone number to iwatchmichiganmagazine at gmail.com, and you'll receive three additional entries into our fabulous vacation giveaways. Or send it along via snail mail to Michigan Magazine, Box 503, Rose City, Michigan, 48654. See you next week. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Discount Foods, downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods, downtown Mayo. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mayo. For home, medical, and health care products, visit Rose City Drug at 2640 North M33, just south of Rose City City Limits. Rose City Drug has a complete diabetic department, including shoes. Serving Michigan for over 20 years, Rose City Drug, Rose City.